about this with the video? When you hear young girls and even beyond calling you a hero, I, I don't, you're such a, a young person yourself, even though you've accomplished so much. How does that feel? I mean, it's incredible, right? Like, I know that I'm very privileged. I know that I've been very lucky that my parents have been supportive of me in my career, that, that I've been able to keep going. And it's very powerful to see little kids and little girls especially look up to that. And, you know, everyone comes from different home environments and, you know, with different levels of opportunity. And so it's just really cool. It's very, it's very satisfying. Um, and then it also helps the community thrive different types of role models, right? I mean, I cover sports for a living. It's basically a boys club. NASCAR and race car driving is even more so yeah. of that, right? <laughs> it really is. When you first were breaking in, and I know this is all you know, but what were some of the obstacles or maybe now stuff you still face yeah. being the only woman out there? Yeah, for sure. And I think the video touched on it a little bit, like that initial respect from the team. You know, we don't have a lot of role models of women who are winning in NASCAR, especially. And so, like, there's this preconceived notion, all right, the girl is not gonna do well. Um, and so to kind of get that, uh, to, to need to earn their respect and to really prove, like, hey, I am worth your extra energy, I'm worth your investment, could sometimes take a little while, but then, you know, you get that. And, uh, you know, the guys race me harder because no one wants to get beat by the girl. And, <laughs> And even if the racers are okay with it, I found in go-karts that like the parents gave them a really hard time. So even, so it kind of perpetuates itself that way, but like people work way harder to get by me and like might move me out of the way instead of passing me cleanly. Uh, you know, they'll block a lot more and it's taken, you know, some of my driver coaches like seeing that because they haven't worked with a woman before to see that and they're like, wow, like you have to work so much harder. So. I don't know, it's kind of a double-edged sword being a female, but um, they're definitely really good things too. Well, that's the, the trouble, right? If a guy comes and tries to cut you off or something, I said, you're going 170 miles an hour. It can be dangerous if you try to enact some type of revenge on them out there. Right, but that's kind of the drama of racing, yes. right? You race these guys week in and week out, and that's, I guess that's part of what makes it a fun thing to watch for a full season is that you have these rivalries and you just gotta be strategic. It's funny, I was reading about your upbringing, born in New York City, went to Stanford, race car driving. I feel like Jimmy Johnson's considered an outsider because he's from California. I can't imagine a New York City-based NASCAR driver, what that must be like for you. But I read that your father, your parents, thought that racing was actually the place where you were on equal footing, right? Where men and women, same track, same car, same technology available. Have you found it to be true, though? Yeah, I mean, I do, and I think racing is really cool because it is definitely a sport, right? You know, we're sitting in a 3,400-pound machine that we're muscling around, and it gets to be 130 degrees in the car, and you're doing it for hours. Um, so it's very much a sport, but it's not brute strength, so it's more endurance, and so it does level the playing field a little bit in terms of physical abilities. And um, although there's some of the personnel things that we were talking about that might be a little different, it is an ev even playing ground, and it's one of the few sports where men and women can compete together at the very top levels. And so that's why it's really cool to see like Lindsey Vaughn like really advocating for being able to compete against the guys because there's just so few sports where you can do that and it's cool like and kind of again I mentioned it in the video like we want to be the best right we don't want to be the best female there's only a handful of us it's not very impressive right like we want to be the best of everyone yeah. so yeah a lot of your job and you're in the off season now a lot of your job though is I think what a lot of women who are list, you know, listening and in this room would understand because you're an entrepreneur for yourself. You're your own fundraiser and you're also the president. Yep, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're the president of your organization. Um, describe how you've had to sort of sell yourself and, and some of the fundraising mm -hmm. efforts that you've had to take over the years. For sure, I mean, racing is definitely a sponsorship driven sport, right? At this day and age, you can't really make it if you don't have that, that partnership. And like, for instance, this year to race in the NASCAR truck series, we're looking to raise, you know, 1.5 to 3 million. So that's kind of like what we're looking at in the scope. And to be able to provide value and ROI, right? Like how do I, how do I show that, okay, I'm worth investing in not just on the racetrack, but everything I do off track, how can we use my speaking? How can we use my you know, engagement with people? And how do you leverage some of the other groups I'm involved in? So it's, you've gotta be very creative. And you know, we, we try a lot of different things and we reassess what works and what doesn't work and constantly change our approach to uh, figure out you know, what, what other people need and how we can help solve other problems. Give us something that worked and then something that didn't work. 
Uh, well, there's a, a lot that hasn't <laughs> worked. Um, well, I mean, even like how we how we show different like price points, for instance, and how we show you know one company might be really focused on the exposure, and if you kind of don't emphasize that enough, or if you start emphasizing you know other ways that you can do returns off the track. I mean, it's just it really varies, and you know I'm not a cup driver yet, so we uh, you know we're still working on trying to make more things work. But I mean, it's been really cool, and it's been a good growing experience. And I look back on my first pitch that I ever made, which I typed up a letter uh, to Betsy Johnson, the clothing company, because I loved their dresses. And <laughs> I walked to their headquarters in New York with my dad. Bless him, he let me do this. Um, and I gave the receptionist my envelope. And I was like, can you please give this to Betsy? <laughs> And she looked at me, she's like, okay. And I was so proud. I was like, I'm going to get a call back, and nothing happened. So that was a really big <laughs> learning experience. That's not how you do a pitch. Wait. <laughs> it's a good try, though, right? So have you ever been able to talk to Betsy since? No, I, mean, we I are haven't. Live I keep maybe. talking about it. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll work. But no. But I mean, it was... <laughs> um, yeah, it also, like, it showed, you know, got to do your market research and see what's a good fit. And just because I like the the company doesn't mean it's necessarily going to fit in NASCAR. Um, yeah. Ford, Toyota, Betsy Johnson. Yeah, yeah why not? exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, right. but I mean, it's a good experience. And I think kind of having the chutzpah, for lack of a better word, to go out and just try that and see what works. And sometimes you need to you know, see it fail for yourself before you really take the good lessons away. Kind of joke about like, you know, hey, the driver of the number six Betsy Johnson car. But seriously, there is, if you look or watch NASCAR in the, the highest level, in the minor leagues, where, what have you, the sponsorship opportunities are pretty similar. I mean, you see the kind of same brands over and over again. They're not exactly female brands. I mean, should they be? And it are, honestly, are companies missing an opportunity to not get on board with you or someone else to try to get their female fans and sell them some products. Yeah, exactly, because a lot of people don't know that NASCAR has almost a 40% female fan base. So if you look at the total number of fans, it's the you know, second most watched sport, and it's huge. And that is a huge group of people that are not being catered to. And over the past three years, you know, there have been more and more women coming in, so the, the percentage is growing. And um, you know, it's just fascinating that we don't see that kind of femininity in the sport, which is fine. You know, every I think every female athlete, especially in racing, has to decide, okay, are we going to play to the femininity or are we not? And um, I think it's really important. I think having the conversations that we're having here you know, today and yesterday, I think it's all really important. Um, and I mean, there's just a lot of opportunity there. Um, and whether it's from a makeup side, feminine hygiene side, you know, hair care products, there's so much there. And if they can tap into the NASCAR, like the most brand loyal fans out there, like that's so powerful. So. That's what we're trying to shift. Yeah, you said you would love it if there was a tampon on the side of a race car. And I feel like that would be a moment, Julia, that oh, would be can amazing. Can you imagine the guys chasing that. the tampon car? I mean, beaten. <laughs> I agree, I think it's gonna be awesome, so we're working on it. Okay, Tampax, <laughs> get on. <laughs> that would just be phenomenal. Okay, uh, we have, uh, we're going to open up to questions too, so be thinking about that. But we should also talk about uh, your work in STEM and, mm -hmm. and really, you know, going to Stanford and, you know, looking at racing as a science, <laughs> it's kind of like a one big science experiment. It really is. Yeah. What did you learn there that you've now applied to your life as a race car driver? Yeah, so I mean, racing is obviously a technology centric sport. And so the better understanding I have of the physics, you know, of the chemistry for like compounds of tires and everything, and the better I am at articulating what I need out of the car, the better we're going to be, the faster I'm going to go, uh, the more the crew chief is going to have to work with. And so a lot of, um, you know, what I did at school and I did some computer science and mechanical engineering design and the problem solving approach was really like computer science was so interesting to me because like there's no shortcut you have to just slog away and get it and it really changed my problem solving um, methods and so that was really cool but then also from a, you know, I'm really interested in how the automotive industry and especially racing can be more environmentally friendly, right? We leave a big far carbon footprint. Um, so kind of taking what I've learned and some of the people I spoke with at Stanford to, um, to kind of see where, like on a sy systemic level, like where the automotive industry can go um, is always really exciting. So constantly doing a lot of different yeah. stuff, but it is a tech sport and I think that's 
really cool and I think it sometimes doesn't get the credit that it deserves. Without a doubt, and I, that, with you talking, it makes me think that even past your racing days, would you want to stay on with the sport in some way, coming up with these oh, type yeah. of innovations? Like, you're in this for your life, right? Well, yeah, and even, like, if you take the fan perspective, like, how do we use more modern technologies to, you know, to engage fans? How do we use virtual reality and all augmented reality to kind of engage the, the person sitting at home or the person in the stands? I mean, it's so exciting and you know people not everyone can go race a car right so how do you give them like the feeling of what that's like so it's really cool stuff yeah it's one of those things i've been lucky enough to be in a race car lucky enough <laughs> you don't know it until you felt it do we have questions out there for julia yeah right in the front uh do you have a microphone cool Uh, Julie Eaton, you talked about a little bit the endurance, but I've always been really curious about the physical aspects of racing a car. And so you're very fit, clearly. What do you do? Because yeah. just driving the car isn't enough. So right, do you we do not shape? sit and turn left. That is much more <laughs> than what you do on the freeway. Um, yeah, so I alternate between strength training and endurance and, you know, everything from sprints to, you know, several miles to weight training. I am a skinny person, so I have to work hard to get the, you know, the brew strength. But doing a lot with varying the exercises, you know, kind of keeping it changing from all body to pure muscle building to endurance. And I spend about an hour a day in the gym, six days a week when I can. I've had my week off because it's been the end of the season. So <laughs> next week's going to be painful getting back into it. But yeah, and heat training too is really important. Yeah, I've always noticed you, it looks like NASCAR drivers are really big, but they're actually pretty light because you, ha yeah, you have to be pretty little, light. Like, I think there was a question honest. over on the side. Just want to know, you said you grew up in New York City. What did your parents do to motivate you to continue to pursue what you were passionate about, and how did you even get into it? Right, great question. So um, my parents were looking for an activity that their girls could do against boys and racing against one of the co-ed sports. And so it was me and my sister, and then my brother joined the next year. And it was really, we, they were just thinking about staying in go-karts just because, you know, we have to work with adults. So we're, you know, held, held accountable for a lot of different responsibilities. You know, we get the technical understanding and mechanical work, and we get competition. And I just loved it. Um, I wanted to keep going, and I figured out when I was 12, it was like, I want to be at the racetrack, I don't want to be at school, I don't want to be anywhere else, like just at the racetrack. So I finished school, obviously, but um, I just, I wanted to do it, you know. It was a very, that's part of what I feel so lucky about is that I had this very clear understanding of what really turned me on from a career standpoint and um, what I just really loved to do. It's amazing. Also took a nice turn on the hit TV show Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We did. <laughs> so describe that. Was this a fundraising effort for you just to get yourself out there? Or did you really want to go try to well, survive in the wilderness? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm a competitive person. And um, it was a real, you know, it was like someone suggested it. And I applied and I got it. And um, it, I'm a much better race car driver than reality TV contestant. <laughs> but I actually learned a whole bunch about branding, right? Because you're playing for a million dollars and my thought was as a sophomore at Stanford, like if I'm like against a single mom or you know someone who's not gonna graduate from Stanford, it's like who's gonna give me a million bucks? So I just didn't talk about it and I was like essentially lying about that whole part of myself and I was a sophomore, so right in the middle of college. So um, there was a monologue of the eventual winner and he said, uh, I am tempted to call Julia vanilla, but I fear that would be a disservice to the flavor of vanilla because people actively seek out vanilla flavored products. And it goes on and it was like, whoa, nine million people saw that. Awesome. <laughs> Um, it's a huge branding lesson in authenticity. Yeah, I mean, that's something that we were just talking about backstage. I mean, there's just sort of this new era. It's of media. It's of everything. And it's about women now telling their stories. And the authenticity part of though is so key. I mean, how much do you want to share? And then how much, you know, honestly, I talk to a lot of athletes. Sometimes they need to close themselves off a little bit because they feel like it keeps them, uh, gives them a competitive advantage. Right, and I think everyone has their own you know, methods for it. I think, especially in our climate and our culture today, I think we're seeing that more women being vulnerable and speaking up and kind of sharing their experiences are, is really important. And I think it's a, you know, it builds community and it helps, helps people find justice, find what they need. And so um, it, you definitely, it's a balancing act and you, sometimes you'll share a little too much and you learn that you don't want to do that again. Um, but for the most part, I think, 
especially because I'm so different within racing and in my sport, I feel the more that I can throw out there for people to relate to, um, the better off I will be uh, from a brand perspective. Um, and it's fun to hear people's stories. I like the connections that I get with people, whether it's online or in person, um, by showing who I am. Any more questions out there? If not, I have another one. Yeah, looks like there's oh, we got one in the back. Hi. Hi, I love hearing your story. I am curious, um, you said there are a few women that were in the industry with you. Do you all connect? Do you all support each other? How, do, how have you started to build a cohort? Yeah, that's a great question. So to break it down, NASCAR has several levels. So at the top level, um, like so Danica Patrick is racing there. There are none in tier two, and there's one who races in tier three. And I'm basically trying to break into tier three. Um, but there are a bunch of us kind of in the more minor leagues. Um, I say a bunch, I mean, Three, four, five. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's really important to connect with them, whether it's online or at the track, and just show that camaraderie. And like, at, the, at the end of the day, we're still all competitors, right? So like, I still want to beat all of them. Um, but to share uh, experiences and to be helpful, I think, is really important. That's important to me, personally. You know, I'm not going to preach that I am here to support women and then not uh, you know, try to engage with them, and um, obviously if there are people that I don't like, I won't, but for the most part, I think it's cool to have that little community of racers and also of engineers. I'd really like to see more women engine engineers on the teams and crew chiefs, because there are no female crew chiefs uh, in NASCAR, which yeah. is, you know, sad. Um, but yeah, just trying to, you know, encourage that kind of camaraderie, I think, is really important. How much has Danica created a roadmap, or, I mean, what you want to do, what you don't want to do. I mean, just yeah. sort of been a litmus test out there. Yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't want to be the first uh, woman to kind of pave the way, and I think she's done a really good job. I think, I think our brands are really, really different, and I would go about kind of my publicity and kind of what type of partnerships I try to go after differently. Um, but, I mean, she's, she's breaking through, and, like, you know, no one knew what it was like to have, in the modern racing, to have a female racing full-time and what that would bring from a fan perspective. And so I think it's been really cool to see kind of what she's done and what's worked and what's not worked and then use that to hopefully help future generations of girls, um, you know, kind of find their footing. Is there a sense of urgency for you now? I mean, you mentioned you broke down the tiers yeah. and sort of where you're trying to break into. Um, you know, athletes ages, not for you, you're young, but you know, time is different for, for athletes. Yeah. Um, are you feeling a sense of urgency now? Oh yeah, uh, definitely. Um, and I think, but I think I've been feeling urgency kind of in some capacity for the entirety of my career, right? You know, drivers are getting younger, but if you're a white guy, you need a differentiating factor. And I think that was a big push for the younger drivers. Um, but yeah, no, I, I want to, I'm still on my journey, you know, I still haven't made it to what I consider my destination yet, and so the quicker I can get there, the better, but, um, I mean, we just keep hustling, it doesn't change, you know, I know what steps I have to take, and I know kind of what I have to accomplish to keep moving forward, so just focus on that, and it'll go where it goes. Is the destination the top tier, NASCAR? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to be a, a cup champion, uh, that's, that's the goal, and, you know, I have a couple championships already, but to kind of do it against the best of the best, uh, in NASCAR would be great. Um, we only have a minute left. Legacy. I know it's hard to ask this because you're in the middle of it. Your <laughs> legacy is not written yet, but you're in a unique position. You have a voice. You're talking to a, a different audience in a lot of ways than you know the Dale Earnhardt Juniors, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, what do you want it to be? What do you hope it is? I hope that I can encourage those who feel like outsiders to, to really push forward. And something that I've been thinking about a lot recently and like how do you, when it's so clear that you don't belong, but you're passionate about something or you see a benefit for other people or yourself or whatever it is, um, to kind of have that confidence. And again, I think I've been very lucky that I am very confident and I've had a ton of support. And so to be able to help inspire men and women, girls and boys alike, um, to really go after it even if it's uncomfortable. Um, you know, I think that's important. I think we are in a time, again, where we really need to advocate for what we believe in. So hopefully that's kind of a big picture goal. Amazing. And get the tampon on the side of the car. And get the tampon car. on the We're side of the car. At some yeah. point, Julia Landauer, thank, thank you so you. much. Fantastic. Thank you.